And the question is, why do we need robotic avatars? What are the advantages of uh, them? Yeah, so uh, actually, that's a good good question. Um, can you can you make my bed right now for me? Oh, oh wait. Um, actually, uh, my my friend over here just broke their leg. Would you would you mind setting it for me? No, oh, you still can't do that. Uh, you know, we had that dinner party tonight. Uh, would you mind uh, making the sushi and the steaks? And oh, you still can't do that. So uh, the reason is is because much of the world still uh, uses these. Yeah. And whether they use them directly or they use them to move objects around, um, Zoom and video and audio only go so far. In fact, this is what I would call this, the, uh, the, the second uh, digital revolution. The first one is, is enabling us to send you know, video and audio and pictures uh, you know, wirelessly. Um, and uh, before the, the digital era, we did it you know, through analog, through radio and, and other transmissions. Um, so the reason you need it is because much of the world uh, uh, has, has activities that require uh, physical labor. Whether you're a doctor, that's a physical labor activity often, uh, or you're a cook or an engineer, et cetera. Very interesting. Um, well, the other things, the other question is, uh, do we have avatars already in use in this world? And, and if yes, in what fields and applications? So we have um, some forms of, of avatars already around us uh, that uh, uh, mostly are in the experimental fields. Um, but uh, for we don't have any humanoid avatars really running around. But we have, for instance, NASA has a robot called Robonaut, which in some ways one could say is, is an avatar. It's, it's limited in its functionality and in, in how you're experiencing it. Uh, but uh, it has, has a humanoid form with, with arms and legs, actually, and, and a head. I mean, it can pick up certain specialized tools and mm -hmm. do activities. Um, there are other non-human form, uh, I, I would say, avatars where people can put on VR headsets and fly a drone, uh, and you could you could call that, I would say, a, a class uh, zero uh, avatar. It's, it's not mm -hmm. really in human form. Mm -hmm. But I also don't think avatars need to be limited human form. What they need to be, those you should be able to feel through them and act through them. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, you may in the future have avatars that are that are the size of ants, so they can crawl through subterranean tunnels, or ones that are microscopic, so I can uh, move through the human body, or giant ones, so I can you know help construct a bridge or a building, either on Earth, the Moon, Mars. Great avatar, uh, uh, Harry. If, if avatars are so great, what are the limitations? What are the barriers that we have today for you know massive? scaling up of you know this technology so really uh, the limitations fall into a couple areas one is uh how how fast uh can you create a camera system and how fat is your bandwidth to to transmit uh, that data even in these calls we'll notice that the, there can be a lag and we can talk on top of each other yeah, yeah. Okay. technology is getting better because cameras were were weren't actually created with the the idea that I needed to be instantaneous, um, so that they will buffer frames and they will do color correction, will do all these other things. So, uh, vision system limitations are there. The the AI um, systems that need to be developed uh, because even though you're controlling it, our vision is is actually going from uh, robotic avatars, which are human controlled to robotic avatars where you're augmented. So say you and I wanted to go play some tennis champions, but we don't play tennis. Well, if enough tennis champions played in our, in our system, the AI would learn how to do it in the same way you, you take pictures with a camera and the camera uh, on your, in your phone, you're, you're, you're sharing this on Instagram of what a great photographer you are. Well, actually most of that work is being now done by your phone and you're just target selecting. Um, so there's an augmentation process that will occur in our avatars where you're going to be 100% controlling it 
and it observes, then you're going to be uh, controlling the, the goal, but the AI will, will help you. Then uh, you'll finally reach a state where the robot is autonomously doing certain tasks. Um, and as you add those up, it can do more and more and more. And, and eventually, you know, you can get uh, uh, Rosie from uh, the, the uh, future uh, robots to be able to uh, be your maid and servants and robots and everything else.